You're watching over and over and over again the Positive Arsenal YouTube channel. Hello, my name is Richard and welcome back to my channel over and over and over again which features everything to do with Arsenal. Now in this video I just want to look back at the Arsenal career of Ian Wright who joined the club on this day, the 23rd of September 1991. Just before I get into all that, I just want to make sure that you are subscribing to my channel. If you enjoy what I'm doing, there's a lot of stuff on history of the club, such as videos like this, and also a lot of current stuff as well. Match reviews, uh, match reports, player profiles, all that kind of stuff as well. Transfer news, um, when we actually finally get some. All that stuff's going on on this channel. So it's a positive Arsenal channel, so I do try and stay away from all the negativity that you might find elsewhere. So if that's what you like, please subscribe to the button. Click the subscribe button down below. Please just give this video the thumbs up as well if you like it. Um, um, and um, hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of my content as well. So I say this day, the 23rd of September 1991, Arsenal signed Ian Wright from Crystal Palace for a club record fee of £2.5 million, pounds, which at the time was a club record. Now Wright had been at Crystal Palace since 1985. He had played 277 games for them, scored 118 goals. But he had been very late actually of getting into professional football and when he was younger, he'd had trials at Southend and Brighton. Both had been unsuccessful uh, and he'd basically given up on a professional football career. He took to various different jobs while playing for local amateur side 10 MB in South East London. He also unfortunately spent two weeks in Chelmsford Prison for uh, failing to pay uh, fines for driving offences. Um, but he got his big break in 1985 when he signed for Greenwich Borough. And he hadn't been there very long when he got scouted by Crystal Palace, was given a trial, and their then manager, Steve Koppel, um, offered him a professional contract, his first professional contract in August 1985, um, just before Ian Wright was 22. So he was quite late getting into the professional game, as I said, but he soon made up for lost time. And by 1987, Crystal Palace had also signed Mark Bright, and between them, the two formed a great partnership at Crystal Palace, got a lot of goals, which accumulated in 1989, with Crystal Palace getting promoted back to the first division via the playoffs. And that season, Ian Wright scored 33 goals in all competitions, um, a brilliant return. Um, to help Crystal Palace win the playoffs. Now, the first season back in Division 1 was a difficult one for Wright. He, um, he suffered a broken ankle twice during the season, which kept him out for a long spell. But he did return to the team just in time to make a big impact in the 1990 FA Cup final. Now, um, Crystal Palace had reached the final by beating Liverpool in the semi-final at Villa Park. I don't know if you remember that game. It was a fantastic game of football. Crystal Palace came from behind to win 4-3. Um, without Ian Wright, of course, who was injured. Uh, and in the final, he started on the bench, but he did come on in the second half with Palace 1 0 down to Manchester United. He, he equalised to send the game to extra time and then put Crystal Palace ahead. And it looked as though um, he was going to get the winning goal. But unfortunately, Man United equalised later on through Mark Hughes and Manchester United won the replay 1 0. Now, the following season, 1990 1991, was a great season for Crystal Palace. They actually finished third in the first division, their highest ever. Um, final placing and Wright scored 25 goals for the club in all competitions another great um, season of course Arsenal won the league that year if you remember losing just one game and it was during the start of the following 1991-92 season that Wright would sign for Arsenal as I say for £2.5 million on the 23rd of September um, now at the time it was looked upon as, as maybe a little bit of a, um, a surprise you know, Arsenal had won the league the year before. Alan Smith had won the Golden Boot. Kevin Campbell had been emerging from the youth side to score a lot of goals. Um, and maybe goal scoring wasn't the main area of the team that looked like it needed strengthening. But he came to Arsenal with a great goal scoring record. Um, and he soon set about um, it bettering that actually for Arsenal. He made his debut at Leicester in a League Cup tie, of course, just as we're playing tonight. In a 1-1 draw and he scored. Um, and then... He made his league debut the following weekend away at Southampton, where he scored a hat-trick. I mean, what a great way to introduce yourself to your new club. Of course, that game sticks in my mind for a great celebration in the first half when David Rocastle scored um, with a goal that Ian Wright had created. Um, the two, of course, grew up on the same estate in South East London as kids, and to be finally playing together for Arsenal um, it was a great moment for those two, and I think for Arsenal fans everywhere. Um, of course, that, that season, Ian Wright ended up winning the Golden Boot. Um, it went down to the last game of the season. We was at home to Southampton. Um, it was, in fact, the last game in front of the old North Bank before it got demolished and turned into an all-seater stand. 
Um, and Ian Wright scored a hat-trick again against them. All three goals coming in front of the North Bank in the second half. The last of which, where he ran from the halfway line to score, was the goal that actually won him the golden boot. Pipping Gary Lineker as well, even better. And of course, was playing for Tottenham, so it made it even doubly better, really. Um, now, the following season, 92-93, the first season of the Premier League, was a difficult one in the league for Arsenal, but we would go on to become the first team ever to win both domestic cups in the same season. Ian Wright played a big part in both, scoring 15 goals across both competitions, which was a record um, at the time. 10 goals in the FA Cup as well, which was fantastic. Um, he also he scored he, he scored twice in the final against Sheffield Wednesday, actually. Uh, once in the first game, uh, where we drew 1-1, and then he gave us the lead in the replay as well, um, before Andy Linigan scored the very dramatic late winner. Um, so that actually made it four goals he'd scored in FA Cup finals in his career, which was second just to, to Ian Rush uh, for Liverpool. Um, the following season, Arsenal would go on to win the European uh, Cup Winners' Cup. Unfortunately, Ian Wright was unable to play in the final. Um, he'd done so much work to get us there. Um, but in the second leg of the semi-final against PSG at Highbury, he picked up his second booking of the competition, which meant he was suspended for the final. And of course, if you remember the Gaza moment on the pitch when he was crying after getting the yellow card, a really uh, sad moment for everybody. Um, and I must admit, there was many Arsenal fans, including myself, who felt as though our chance of winning the final had been massively reduced um, by the fact that Wright wouldn't play. But Alan Smith stepped up, scored the only goal. We won 1-0. Uh, to win only our second ever European trophy. Wright actually scored 35 goals that season as well. Um, fantastic. And the following 94-95 season was a tough one for the club. Um, we had a few issues going on. George Graham ended up getting sacked. Um, but we did reach the Cup Winners' Cup final again. Ian Wright scored in every round up to the final. We played Real Zaragoza in Paris. Um, but unfortunately, we lost 2-1. Um, it wasn't Wright who scored our goal in the final. Actually, it was John Hartson. Um, but he did finish that season on 30 goals again for the fourth season in a row. Um, fantastic um, effort that was. 95-96 um, wasn't such a good season for, for Ian Wright, unfortunately. Bruce Riop was the manager. He had several high-profile fallouts with him, didn't he, if you remember. Um, he did get given a captaincy at one point, but he also handed in a transfer request. That's how unhappy he'd become. Luckily, the club rejected it. Um, he finished the season with 23 goals, a little bit less than in previous years. Um, but a lot of that was down to, I say, the, the poor relationship he had with the manager and also different tactics for the team, really. That wasn't all about getting the ball quickly to Ian Wright, as had been the case previously under George Graham. Of course, in 1996, Arsene Wenger came um, as manager. And of course, in his very first ever Premier League game in charge of Arsenal, Ian Wright scored both goals in a 2-0 win at Blackburn. He carried that form on to the end of the season. Another 30-goal season as Arsenal finished third in the uh, Premier League. Um, and then, of course, that took us into the 97-98 season, which would um, become Ian Wright's last season at the club. Um, the start of that season, he was very close to the goal-scoring record set in 1939 by Cliff Bastin of 178. Um, he finally beat that total um, in September 1997 um, when he scored a hat-trick against Bolton um, to finally beat that tally um, to become the record goal scorer. What a great day that was as well. Anybody there that day will, um, of course, remember it really well. Um, it was fantastic. But unfortunately, he suffered an inju injuries in the second half of that season. Hardly played as we won the double. Um, luckily, he'd made enough league appearances to qualify for a league title medal to complete his domestic collection. Um, he didn't start the FA Cup final either against Newcastle. Uh, he was on the bench that day, didn't get on as we won 2-0. Uh, he did get a medal for that, but I'm sure it's not one he remembers uh, too fondly. And that summer, 1998, he left Arsenal to join West Ham for £500,000, having played 288 times for Arsenal and scoring a that club record at the time of 185 goals. Fantastic goal scoring record he had. Um, he, he was at West Ham for just over a year. He made 26 appearances for them, scored nine goals um, before he then finished his career with Brees Bells at Nottingham Forest, Celtic and Burnley. Um, he ended his career in the summer of 2000, um, having made 626 club appearances. A great record that was seen as he came into the game so late and scored 324 goals. A brilliant, brilliant goal scoring record uh, from a brilliant, brilliant player. Um, unfortunately, his brilliance was not recognised um, enough by England, actually. He only ended up making 33 appearances for England um, and scored just nine goals. Many of his appearances were from the bench. He made his debut for England in uh, February 1991 in a game against Cameroon. He was actually robbed 
of a goal as well by Gary Lineker, poked one in um, on the goal line that would have been um, Ian Wright's goal. Um, Graham Taylor didn't really seem to fancy Ian Wright for some reason. He left him out of the, the squad for Euro 1992, even though he'd won the Golden Boot in the Premier League the season before. Um, and in fact, he only made nine starts and seven substitute appearances under Graham Taylor. Although, of course, he did score four goals in the game against San Marino, which actually proved to be Graham Taylor's last game in charge of England, having failed to qualify for the 1994 um, World Cup. Um, Terry Venables then took over in the build-up to Euro 96. He, he, he didn't fancy right again. He only gave, gave him one start and three substitute appearances. All of those were in his first five games in charge. He then completely discarded him um, and Ian Wright missed out on the Euro 96 squad completely. After that competition, Glenn Hoddle took over. Um, he seemed to favour Ian Wright a little bit more, seemed to give him a little bit more of an opportunity. He gave him seven starts and six substitute appearances. And in fact, Ian Wright would probably have been in the squad for the 1998 World Cup. Um, he'd done a lot to get us there. If you remember, his best performance ring was probably in the, the last qualifying game away in Italy in a 0-0 draw. He was magnificent that night. Um, unfortunately, the injuries that had plagued him in the second half of that season for Arsenal ruled him out of the World Cup. So in the end, his 33 appearances for England was actually the second highest total for a player never to have played in a major tournament, um, second behind Mick Shannon. Um, now for Arsenal in the end he scored 11 hat-tricks actually which was um, only two players in Arsenal's history have scored more uh, both from the 1930s which was Jimmy Brain and Jack Lambert so that was another uh, magnificent achievement um, for Ian Wright as well. Um, he did briefly become director of football in 2007 at Ashford Town um, and later on in 2012 he was briefly first team coach at MK Dons but it wasn't really coaching um, where his career moved to after playing it was actually in the media um, he had a great television career you can understand why very um, bubbly personality very likeable guy um, he appeared on top of the pops before getting his own show called Friday Nights All Right like a chat show um, which ran for a couple of years he also appeared on other other TV shows such as Friends Like These I'll Do Anything he was a he was a captain on They Think It's All Over and he also was a host on the new series of The Gladiators as well um, again he got another show on Channel 5 live from Studio 5 before a big fallout there led to him quitting um, and of course most recently he was in the 2019 series of I'm a Celebrity of course um, where again his great personality shone through didn't it um, apart from on the TV he's also been on radio quite a bit he, he was on Talk Sport um, he also had a show on Absolute Radio Rock and Roll Football he appeared on that and also on 5 Live 606 where he's been uh, he appears regularly since 2013 and of course on TV as a pundit as well BT Sport he was in 2013 he started there and since 2017 he's been a regular pundit on Match of the Day of course his great um, banter with Lineker and Alan Shearer um, of course make that programme and more entertaining um, than sometimes the football is. Um, just another thing on, um, on Ian Wright as well, he did actually have a UK hit single in 1993 produced by Chris Lowe of the Pet Shop Boys who of course is a big Arsenal fan. The song was called Do The Right Thing and it reached number 43 in the UK charts. And of course, in 1996, Ian Wright produced his first autobiography called Mr. Wright, um, which was a great story of, of his life, uh, as both his early life and his career uh, in football. And that was then updated in 2016 uh, called A Life in Football. And if you haven't read that, I really recommend that you do. It's a great book um, charting, obviously, the life and career of a great personality. Now, from my personal point of view, um, uh, Wright, he probably remains my favourite ever Arsenal player. Um, fantastic wasn't he I, I was lucky enough to have a season ticket in the time that he played um, and also I was attending away games on a regular basis back then um, I probably saw most of his 185 goals live actually so um, maybe that's part of the reason why I just love the guy um, I love his personality loved his personality on the pitch I thought he was a fantastic player um, and of course you know he remains a very popular figure doesn't he every time he talks about Arsenal you can see his love for the club um, he's just like one of us isn't he um, and that's what we like about him he's just a fan of Arsenal and it was great that he achieved everything that he did um, with the club so that's that video there. I hope you enjoyed that obviously just a little recap on the Arsenal career and, and the football career actually in general of Ian Wright of course who signed for Arsenal on this day the 23rd of September 1991
If you like this video, I say please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel as well, um, you know some of the historical stuff that I do, and also the current stuff as well, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the subscribe button down below. That would be um, much appreciated. Um, and so keep a, keep an eye out for the channel because I've got some coverage of tonight's game at Leicester in the Carabao Cup, and also as well some great stuff coming up as we build up towards the big Premier League game on Monday evening. Um, at Anfield. I do believe the kickoff to that game is being brought forward slightly to 8 o'clock from 8.15. I don't know whether that's to, to cover the uh, the pub opening hours, shutting at 10 o'clock, I don't know. Um, but that's happened, so I believe the kickoff's now 8 o'clock instead of quarter past 8 on Monday. But I'll be doing some shows building up to that. I'm hoping to get another positive Arsenal podcast in as well. Uh, I'm just trying to arrange to get a good time to get that done over the next couple of days. Um, and I say there will be some coverage of the game tonight as well. So stay tuned to the channel for all that. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for all the support I've had for the channel so far. Um, thanks for everyone who's um, subscribed so far. I really much appreciate it. Um, and hopefully you'll continue to enjoy um, what I'm doing. And of course, in the meantime, we're always in the same way on this channel. As always, stay safe. Come on, you gunners!